Hi guys, just wanted to show you my Super Nintendo PC. Um, it took me a good few months to make it, um, but I wanted to basically share the community and um, talk about some of the improvements I've made, which I think some people haven't thought of, and um, some new features, um, which I think will be really good. Um, so basically, um, um, took me about three months. Um, it, it all fits really well inside the SNES PC. I have two GameCube ports on it as well, working micro switches for power and reset. I actually have a working eject button as well, um, right there as well. I took it off just to show you guys how I do it later, because not a, I haven't seen anybody else um, that's modded a power SNES actually utilizing this button, but I'll go into that in a minute. Okay, the back of the PC has a nice vent. Uh, I also have two uh, dual band antennas. Uh, which gives me 8 to 11 AC. Um, I also have custom. Let me have a look. Uh, I have a custom trophylite um, backplate for the HDMI LAN uh, DC. I've uh, got a toggle button right there under, above my thumb. Two USB ports, uh, two USB 3 ports there, and a USB port for, um, um, there as well. <laughs> While we're here, let's talk about the grill. Um, basically, I used the Dremel to cut this out. I've seen um, one other guy um, make a mesh like this as well. I originally did want to put a fan in here, but somebody tried that already and um, it didn't work very well. So um, I've done the same thing. I've cut it out nicely using a Dremel and microfiles. I used the mesh from Office Works. You can buy um, those sort of paper holders or, um, or folder holders, and they use this black metallic mesh. I just cut that to size and I made a really nice neat um, vent window there as well just uh, basically then hot glued it all in, in place okay um, so that looks pretty well now next thing I want to talk about is the actual uh, eject button what I've done here um, is I've used the original reset button from the SNES motherboard um, I bought a faulty Super Famicom, so I had no need for the actual parts itself, so I just um, threw that away. I uh, soldered the, um, the reset button onto a breakout board. Okay, I've also uh, I also uh, dremeled out most all of the button, um, so basically it ended up looking like this. This is really really hard plastic, so it took a while to actually get it um, this clean. Okay. Now the other side um, is actually um, just a piece of Lego, uh, but it works really well, and I'll show you that in a sec. So here's the button, it works really well, okay? So I have uh, the toggle button at the back, I have the eject button here and the reset button here. This acts as my escape, this is my P button, and this is my uh, function button for the encoder. So holding the function button at the back, um, pushing the P, will um, throw a tab so I can get into menus and things like that on things such as my aim. Escape basically exits, power is power. Okay, let's have a look inside. Okay, just a standard micro switch, a really small micro switch here and one on the power. Okay, a lot of people use um, rubber bands um, in this scenario but I opted not to. The reason behind that is I found a lot of rubber bands after a couple of years just disintegrate so uh, they break so I might as well just use a um, spring I just pillaged one from a pen and it works pretty well okay I uh, mentioned before um, I have the GameCube ports are just a my may flash um, GameCube to PC slash Wii adapter you can buy them off eBay for about $15 they work really well uh, compatible with things like Dolphin and so forth okay I uh, basically just directly wired the ports um, from the adapter itself. I didn't use any GameCube uh, extension cords whatsoever. I didn't need to, basically because of the space limitation. Um, I have a, pan, uh, a fan here. It's a 5 volt fan uh, from a GPU from my HP uh, laptop that was just broken. Uh, that basically connects to a, um, a rotary wound um, 10k potentiometer and that connects to my uh, just uh, a standard um, uh, hard drive cable 5 volt on ground and uh, that works really well 
Okay, the, uh, the main flash connects to a USB hub. Uh, the USB hub um, connects to a, what is it? To a, a Minimus AVR um, encoder. Uh, basically that um, I used CADE software to program that uh, to get those um, couple of buttons that I use. Uh, it's a very, very small device. Um, and I uh, use it because it's very small. Any other keyboard encoders are much bigger than that. Okay, so I just sits nicely in there. Okay. Um, uh, the, the motherboard itself is a um, is a Nook motherboard. It's a it's a D54250 WYB. It runs a Intel i5 4250 uh, Intel 5000 graphics, um, gigabit LAN. Um, I also have an onboard gigabit wireless with Bluetooth, um, as well as a 250 gig uh, SSD on board, and um, 120. A gig uh, Samsung Pro SSD as well. So I have two SSDs uh, with a total of 400, or was it uh, 370 gigs uh, split across two drives and 16 gig of RAM. Okay, um, all the Nook um, ports basically connect to uh, that back port I made. Um, all of these connect connections are very short. Um, I had to get them from China, a bit of a trial and error, but uh, it's nice, it's pretty tight, but it works really well, okay. Uh, obviously I chose the NUC uh, because it's very, very small and quite powerful, you can get pretty decent ones at this stage, um, which have pretty good specs and run most things. Uh, all USB free, like I mentioned before, okay. Now, the controller ports are wired directly to a RAPNET um, SNES to a PC adapter. Uh, they work really well. I didn't want to risk it with any of uh, eBay uh, converters. I went straight for the best. Um, now, the LED um, here uh, is connected uh, using uh, two optocouplers. Now, there's one guy on eBay, but sorry, one guy on YouTube that um, used an optocoupler to uh, overcome the LED problem because of the common ground. Uh, the, sorry, because the uh, ground wasn't common between HD LED and uh, the power LED on motherboards. Um, he didn't share schematics, so I thought I'll share that with you guys. It was a bit of a trial and error learning curve, but uh, I want to talk to you guys about that anyway. So, uh, what I've done is I used a 4N28 optocoupler. It's just um, it's a single optocoupler there. Uh, uh, pin 1 and 2 go to the uh, actual LEDs. Uh, 6, 5 and 4 act as a transistor um, so basically use pin 1 and 2 uh, connecting to the um, LED um, header on the motherboard and then use pin 5 and 4 uh, to connect your to your RGB okay uh, so um, so basically you got the positive going to 1 on the HDD LED header um, 5 goes to the USB 5 volt, okay, uh, on the transistor, used going to 1K, uh, that's going to my red for the flashing of the HD LED, going to the USB ground, okay. Now, uh, originally, I had the uh, the power LED going straight to the 5 volts via 1K resistor, but what I found with the NAC is that um, a lot of them, even with the latest BIOS, uh, stand by with the uh, um, USB power actually on uh, even when the NAC is off so I wasn't able to actually power down um, basically as a result I couldn't power down the f 5 volts on the USB um, and the uh, power LED was always on so I had to um, use a second optocoupler um, in the same format as this one uh, just for the power LED so once again the power LED going to 1 and 2 um, pin 5 to um, 5 volts, 4 to 1K, go into the, um, the blue for the power, then go into the actual common ground on the um, RGB LED. So hope that actually helps someone. Um, it took me a little bit of trial and error, but uh, that's basically how I did it. Um, do it at your own risk, um, basically, and please make sure you do your own research, but I hope this will be helpful to someone who's uh, basically come across the same problem and wanted a flashing 
LED uh, on a SNES PC. Okay. Uh, if you have any question, guys, uh, please um, shoot me a message, and uh, I hope this actually helps um, some of you. Uh, but it was a really fun project, and it uh, came out pretty nice in the end. I think. Thanks very much for watching. Hey guys, so this is um, the final product. Um, all working configured with Hyperspin. I've changed a few things um, in the final design as well. Um, one of them being is a ProBiga secondary SSD hard drive in this box, uh, being an Intel 240 hard drive, uh, plus the, um, obviously I kept the original one, running the OS and Hyperspin, which was a 240 gig uh, Samsung uh, mini SATA drive, so together it's 500 gig. Um, it took me probably eight months to build all up, but I've added a lot of different uh, controller options to the actual setup, which I'll go through shortly. Um, but this is the end result, and it's uh, in nice daylight. Um, what I wanted to show as well is just the restored uh, coloring on the Super Famicom. The Famicom plus the cartridges itself um, were probably this color. As you can see, the bottom half of the cartridge is, is yellowing, this is pretty common, and the top cartridge is restored, which is basically the same color as, as the SNES and the Metroid card on top. Um, I've, I've done a little research into it. Um, I know people who try the RetroBright method, um, which basically creates a paste using a peroxide paste for hair bleach, etc. I think that is a really bad way of doing things. Uh, mainly because it's inconsistent. Uh, you're slopping a paste on the actual plastic itself and from what I've heard and some people I've spoken to it can actually end up in getting you uh, blotchy results. What I've done to give this type of finish um, which is pr pretty much pristine brand new is to use two things. One, uh, I've used a Nappy Sun also called as Vanish. It's got a low percentage peroxide in there and it's just an ox oxy action um, basically mouth bleach and what you do with that is you put all the parts into a, um, a bucket with water, put in the sun probably add a big cup full of this stuff in and leave it for two days and um, I can tell you that the SNES itself and the cart have been restored just using this um, the other thing I tried as well was using a uh, hydrogen peroxide uh, liquid which was 50% that actually worked a little bit better in terms of uh, yielding the same result but it was just much much quicker um, and I got the liquid from a hydroponics shop you can buy that um, from the shop itself and it's primarily used for disinfecting um, aquariums and, and equipment and stuff like that but it's 50% um, strength and uh, it's, it's, it's stronger and what I found is you can do a full restoration on a controller or or a cart or whatever plastic you want to restore in probably half a day um, but bear in mind it has to be in full sunlight because the sunlight is the thing that activates the actual peroxide itself so what I've done is I've done a few things with with the um, restoration of the plastic as well um, I restored all of my SNES controllers as you can see they are in immaculate condition as well clean inside outside what I've done as well is because this was some Super Famicom um, controllers, the, the yeah, actual cord itself is only about a meter, which is very short. So what I've done is I used a large paper clip. Um, you, you jam the paper clip in those four prongs here, and you pull um, this off. Um, then basically I, I've cut the wires, I've cut the wires, and I've a, I spliced a um, network cable, cut five, cut six, whatever, just a nice gray one, and I made the cables three meters long. And it works really well. I got four of these in um, excellent condition, and I've framed along cables. Okay, um, but I think I'm using on the snares itself is uh, I got two of the other fruit e easy blue um, Bluetooth um, uh, adapters. You can see this um, mod um, that they actually published on the website. Um, and it works really well. So I've, uh, one thing I've done to this mod is I've made a, um, a different um, uh, USB socket here so I can charge with any sort of Android phone charger, etc. Um, and I put some extra um, LEDs there for uh, charging 
complete charging and, and uh, syncing with the blue and that was a while ago but that, work, that works really well um, I also reprogrammed the actual um, boards itself just to match my um, keyboard default keyboard config keys for uh, player one that I've configured across all of my systems on the actual um, SNES itself what I've done as well guys is I've put one of the easy keys inside a Neo Geo Pro controller stick uh, this is the actual result I, I even got the little sync button for underneath um, but what I've done is I've got a couple of LEDs there um, an on-off switch and in a sink, so I'll turn that on. Turn that on there. So there you go. It's looking. It, it will. It will automatically sync to, to my snares. Um, so it's looking for that now, and it will just work out of the box. Um, it, it was a really good stick um, for all the Neo Geo stuff sort of thing, and it's wireless. I've put a 30, 33 a milliamp hour battery in here as well because it's a bigger joystick. I can. Uh, fit a large battery in there, a lithium ion battery. Um, the board itself, the Adafruit board, takes um, uh, I think 22 um, milliamps um, when used um, with the 3300 um, milliamp battery. Um, I get about 90 hours of usage um, out of the actual um, joystick. So I've never had to charge it to date, but 90 hours is pretty good. Um, with with this one, I got a 500 milliamp battery. In this one, I get about five hours out of this. Okay, and that work both work really really well, and both are programmed to act as player one. Okay, oh, obviously I got my GameCube controllers here as well, um, and they plug into um, to my SNES SNES there, player one, player two. Um, Dolphin Five natively supports GameCube, so it's actually configured for that. Okay, what I've also done is I've got two of the um, uh, Neo Geo uh, Pet 2's um, controllers, uh, which were PS2 ones. I've converted them to, um, to USB, and um, I've used the um, Atmel um, 32 uh, um, little controllers that I showed you guys earlier in all my pads. Um, they're fully reprogrammable here by pushing these two buttons and they're just pre-configured for my player one keyboard mapping. I use them for like Street Fighters and things like that. Street Fighter 4, PC, etc. And it works really well. Also got two of these Neo Geo pads um, also converted to USB which I can reprogram as I see fit uh, but I use them for like Neo Geo games as well. And I got a N64 controller which I use the RapNet um, adapter board which can be seen here and that's also con configured for for USB um, I've took out the analog stick it's actually in a really good condition I've restored that put a bit of grease on the bottom uh, cleaned up the actual controller when I opened it up and it's as new and hopefully the grease will prevent any um, friction and rubbing off uh, of the plastic in the future so we'll maintain it for a really long time to come okay uh, so that's all my other controllers um, also, I thought a good idea would be to take advantage of the Bluetooth, and I've just added and synced a, uh, a Bluetooth headphones, um, primarily to play it at night. Also, if I want to run co uh, movies through Kodi, etc., TV shows, I can just do it through the headphones. Uh, I've made another video, which I link uh, now, um, about these two uh, joysticks that I made for my Vulix um, cab. And they fully work with my SNES as well. So they're just rotary joysticks which I use for um, uh, SNK uh, rotary games as well. Alright, so let's go back to the SNES. Uh, I mentioned before, power is a uh, is a switch eject. It's fully working. Um, I haven't seen any other mods that use the eject. They just basically glue that shut, but I think that's a waste. I showed you guys earlier how to use, how I've actually made the eject switch. Um, I use that for pause in game, uh, in Kodi. I use that for toggling off subtitles, holding it down for five seconds, enables, disables certain functionality, reset it, reset. The back of the cart um, is, a, is a fan. I got a, a nice fan in there blowing out the air. Uh, USB port on the side, USB free. Two USB ports at the back. Um, that's my service switch, which acts as a tab. 
um, my HDMI LAN and my uh, power jack. Okay, so uh, let me power this on and I'll show you guys how it looks in action. Okay, so um, just plug that in at the back of the unit. I'm just using HDMI and power. Don't really need anything else other than that. Um, so just powering on. And I discussed the LED mod um, previously, but basically I got red for power and um, and blue. And together it gives me a purple, but I got the LED um, uh, activity as well as power. Okay, so it's just booting now. It's we're running Windows 10 uh, Professional. Um, the reason I went for Windows 10 is because it's obviously the latest, but I really wanted it for um, for the DirectX 12, and there's obviously a lot of advantages of having that. So it's just that's just my uh, splash. I do want to show the uh, OS with hyperspin, as many people do, because. I found that a lot of the background applications such as joy to key uh, event goals which I use heavily um, and things like that actually um, stop working if you use something else um, as a shell. Um, but that's my boot. It usually boots faster than that. Um, but yeah, just minimal taskbar. Just you can see the uh, start button in the bottom um, left and that basically boots to hyperspin but for me that's good enough. Um, so now it should just go into hyperspin. Okay, so uh, my default uh, system is Kodi. I made that. Uh, so basically, that gives me some instruction on um, on how to operate Kodi. I, I obviously use Android phone or a tablet to control as well. But if I choose to use a uh, controller, I can. So basically, um, if I I can go through a system here using my my controller, etc. Uh, I can also obviously, like I said, turn on my my Bluetooth and uh, and I can go through that as well, okay, which I think is pretty good for Cody. Um, so like I mentioned before, I use the uh, eject button, so here I got turn on, turn to um, uh, tap to change the subs, hold to uh, uh, shift them, I got my Cody controls which I've done, um, etc, right, so uh, these are all my systems here. So what I might do is I might actually uh, turn something on, such as coding, which I quite like. So yeah, it's that's just my coding interface. So a lot of people use the Kodi with the hyperspin interface, but I chose to do the opposite. Um, so I do want to do that. I just hold it to exit, so it's back into hyperspin. Um, so that's basically it, guys. Um, I had a lot of fun building this system. I think it came out pretty neat. Uh, and a very clean design. Uh, yeah, any questions please ask. Um, but uh, I hope that uh, gave some of you guys some ideas about uh, what you can do with a SNES uh, PC build. Um, obviously I got some original stuff in this one which I hope will uh, encourage others to maybe use um, or improve on. But uh, it was certainly a lot of fun um, to uh, to actually build itself. Uh, what I might actually show you guys as well is, you know, like I said, I'm using a NAC, which I a little bit overclocked, but it's actually um, surprisingly runs pretty much everything that I wanted to run. Um, just to give you an example, I'll just go PC games. I can actually run most most stuff, including uh, Mortal Kombat 9. Um, you know, like so, there's some PC games. Which, which actually I can actually run itself, so that's fine. But um, yeah, it, this was a awesome project to um to play with. But uh, yeah, thanks guys, thanks for watching. Cheers.